What's going on Dividend Chasers? Dividend Bloodhound here with another investing episode. In this episode we're going to talk UK investing and we're going to talk about the UK defence sector stocks or my top three picks for the UK defence sector and where they are available on the FTSE 250 and the FTSE 100. These companies have been around for quite a while now. They always seem to win big defence contracts and we all know that military hardware and military software in some instances is extremely expensive and these companies have proved themselves well to make a profit out of the government contracts that are on offer from the UK and also these three companies are global companies as well so they receive contracts from other foreign nations, friendly foreign nations to the UK for outsourcing of defence industry services. If this video brings you some value, it'd be great if you could hit the like button in that corner there. Or if you're brand new here, it'd be fantastic if you hit the subscribe button in that corner and even tick the notification bell to get no notified of when I release brand new content just like this for you guys to look into and research your stocks. That being said, let's roll the intro and get into the analysis and I'll bring you the very first stock. Catch you in there. What's going on again guys, welcome into the analysis centre and the first stock we're going to call, talk about is Quintech or Syntech depending on however you want to pronounce it. Uh, a defence sector company that specialises in security, aerospace and obviously defence and this is a video all about UK defence stocks so that's quite frankly not surprising. Anyway, into the fundamentals. So first up we have the ticker, which is QQQ. Has a market cap of £1.75 billion. A PE ratio of 16.07. Revenue of £1.07 billion. EPS of 0.19. A dividend yield of 0.71%. They also have a net income of £106 million profit margin of 9.91% and a debt to assets ratio very very low at 38% or 38.47 which is particularly good in the defence sector that is for certain. Now if we have a look at the revenue growth over the last three and five years we find that their revenue has grown 7% over the last three years and 11% over the last five which is pretty good not quite double digit growth but certainly getting there and their compound annual growth rate is also pretty decent at a solid 5.81 percent and they've been growing their dividends not quite so well they've had to trim it recently so they're down 28 percent at the moment so there is no dividend growth to be had on this one and the yield is quite low as well. However, if you look at the rest of the fundamentals which we've just looked at, the company is reasonably healthy. So I believe that the dividend will return after the health crisis has diminished and they can get back onto normal form. They are currently trading at £3.13 a share. They peaked up at £3.84 and mid-crisis they went all the way down to £2.50 which would have been a bargain price to buy in at and then they've recovered roughly half of what they lost so far and I see no reason why they won't get, eventually get back to where they are as we get a couple of years down the line. They have numerous numerous sectors in science and engineering and security they specialize in command and control communications intel recon cyber and artificial intelligence and they've got as i said they're global that they've got global interests across the world in australia belgium canada sweden the uae and no surprise the united states as well that being said that wraps us up for the very first stock i will see you back out in the real world hello again guys welcome back to the real world that was our first stock there, Quintech or Syntech, depends on however you want to say it. A really good, strong found, strongly founded defence company. Appreciate that the dividend yield is a little bit low for some people and they're not growing their dividends at the moment. 
because they've largely cut it due to the health crisis but as you can see the fundamentals of the company are not that bad at all and are, i would say are actually pretty good especially with their debt ratio so they should be able to recover pretty quickly when that eventually happens right anyway on to the next company the next company is a company that has a practical monopoly over the us uh, the us the uk defense sector and that is BAE Systems. They pretty much run or have fingers in pies of every single defense contract that there is out there, I would think. They are absolutely huge and dwarf all the other defense companies in the UK, FTSE exchanges. That being said, let's get in there and let's take a look at them. What's going on again, guys? Welcome back into the app. And as you can see, I'm invested a small amount in BAE Systems. They've got a huge monopoly across the UK defence sector, over five different segments globally as well, the, through the UK, the US, Australia, Canada, Saudi, and the UAE, Saudi Arabia, sorry, and the United Arab Emirates. They own a significant chunk in the missile producer that is MBDA and they build pretty much everything over in the UK. So every UK warship at the moment has been built by BAE Systems over the last 20 years. Same with the submarines, they're responsible for building the Eurofighter, a massive chunk of it. And they also build the F part of the F-35 jets that are over in the United States and supply a great deal of parts for that as well. They are well and truly head and shoulders clear of every other defense company in the uk and have significant significant holdings to be able to take it to some us companies as well which is quite surprising and the us military does use bae systems for an awful lot of their equipment as well anyway let's get into some of the fundamentals so obviously called bae systems ticker is ba this is not to be confused with the ticker ba in the united states which in the United States, which is obviously Boeing. So BA in the UK is BAE Systems, and BA in the US is Boeing. Right, now that that's cleared up, let's have a look at, well, you can quickly have a look at my investment there, eight shares, currently down £2.24 or 5.44%. Anyway, the market cap of this company is 15.35 billion. A PE ratio of 10.99, revenue of 18.3 billion, an EPS of 0.43, a dividend yield that was 4.73% but has recently been suspended due to the health crisis. They have a net income of 1.48 billion, a profit margin of 8%, and a reasonably high but still under 100%, which is good, debt to assets ratio of 78.90%. If we have a look at their revenue over the last three and five years, we find that that is just about positive. Over the last three years, it has grown 3.48%, and over the last five, 0.96%. Growth is growth, but we'd rather we see this a little bit higher. But as we can see, the earnings per share there, which, mean, which is a measure of how efficient the company is, has grown by double digits at 14 and 17% respectively. And they have a compound annual growth rate of 5.34%, which is also pretty good. And the dividend yield growth was 2.89% over three years. However, this is currently suspended. So I wouldn't, there is no indication of when this will return. I imagine it will in the near future. But for now, the dividend growth ratio is out on a limb. We are currently trading at four pound 87 a share it peaked at six pound 57 and then mid crisis fell down to four pounds 35 a share that would have been a great time to get in i sort of timed it just afterwards and expected a return to at least six pounds a share but that didn't come to fruition so i'm just holding this one in the long term and obviously the dividends have been cut so going to have to play patient with this one. That being said, that wraps us up for BAE. I'll catch you back in the outside world. What's going on again, guys? Welcome back to the real world. That was BAE Systems there then, the huge Goliath that is in the sits in the middle of the 
UK defence sector that dominates absolutely everything. It's head and shoulders clear of everybody else. And some people argue that it should be, the government should step in and break it up. There is no word of that. It's not even in the pipeline. Just some people argue that it's got such a monopoly that it's actually unfair on government contracts. However, for us investors, that does mean that it's got the rest of the market cornered and it will win most contracts. And that is obviously good for our investment and good for our dividends. Appreciate the dividends are cut or suspended at the moment, but I don't see anything on the horizon that would affect BAE returning its dividends in the longer term once the health crisis passes a little bit. That being said, I'm going to wrap things up for that stop there and we're going to move on to our final company, which is Ultra Electronics. Let's get in there, let's take a look at how they are getting on and what their fundamentals look like. What's going on again guys? Welcome into the final stock and back into the analysis centre for the final part of the analysis in this video. So our last company is Ultra Electronics. It's a very diverse company that operates over many different sectors in the within the defence sector itself. So you've got aerospace, cyber, even energy, nuclear energy, as well as underwater warfare, command and control systems, co battle space management and noise cancellation on ships. Very, very diverse, got its fingers in an awful lot of defence pies. Anyway, let's have a look at the fundamentals. So obviously, company is called Ultra Electronics, ticket is ULE, has a market cap of 1.48 billion, a PE ratio of 19.38, Revenue of 824 million, an EPS of 1.08 pounds per share, dividend yield of 0.72%, and a net income of 74.5 million, a profit margin of 9%, and a reasonably low debt to assets ratio of 56.81%. The company has been doing really reasonably well of late and has a three-year revenue growth of 2.95% and a five-year growth rate of 1.65%. It's not quite double-digit growth, as we can clearly see, but growth is growth at the end of the day. EPS, earnings per share, based on efficiency, is actually in much better shape, 28.72% in the three years and 8% in the five years, respectively, and a compound annual growth rate of a reasonably low 1.86%, but again, growth is growth. They've been growing their dividends over the last three years of 4.28%, not spectacular, but steady. And they've been growing in the last 14 years. They've raised their dividends for 14 of them. However, they cut them in 2011 and 2019, but then returned them to where they would be respectively. That remains to be seen this year though, due to obviously the health crisis. I wouldn't be surprised to see the yield remain low and the growth, if it does grow, not by very much at all. Currently trading at 20 pounds and 90p a share. It has peaked at 22 pounds 94 in mid-January and Peak crisis dropped all the way down to £15.46, which obviously would have been a bit of a steal if you could get in at that cost. That wraps me up for this stock here, and I'll see you gladly back in the real world shortly. Catch you there. That was the final company there then, guys. That was Ultra Electronics. Again, a very diverse company through the defence sector, as all three of these companies were. Just to recap, you had Ultra Electronics, Quintech and BAE Systems. All three in really good shape to come out of this crisis pretty well, to be fair. Uh, only one has suspended its dividends completely, and that is BAE Systems. However, if I was forced to choose one of these companies out of the three, it is actually the one I am invested in, and that is BAE Systems, just purely because of the monopoly it has over the market and the higher dividend yield that it's, it offers. And also I know that that yield is usually sustainable if it weren't for a global pandemic. That being said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it has 
brought you some value and if that is the case please hit the like button in that corner there you have no idea how much that helps me out and it helps the channel out these videos do take some time to make and if you're brand new here it'd be absolutely fantastic if you haven't already to hit that subscribe button and even tip the notification bell as well so you can get notified when i release brand new content such as this here that being said there's nothing left to say i really do like using that being said um there's nothing left to say really except thanks for watching i really appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video and i hope to see you in my very next episode that would be fantastic catch you later